it's hard because as a youth in care, you kind of already feel like you don't matter and like you're just kind of like a case number. We can't train homophobia out of people. And if people are not comfortable in doing this work, they need to step out of the way. There's agencies that have come out and will not support foster parents who are gay. It's unacceptable. It's disgusting. I, I, I don't even have the right word. Advocates outraged at a new report about the Department of Children and Family Services, the Auditor General exposing the agency for shortfalls in care for LGBT youth. News Channel 20's Jordan Elder joining us tonight with the department's response to those accusations. Jordan. John, a lack of records and skipped protocols are just some of the findings. This 154 page audit outlines many issues in the department's care for LGBTQ youth. It was rough understanding who I was as a uh, as a young gay man uh, growing up in a system was not the healthiest place for me. James McIntyre says his story is one of many an LGBTQ youth bullied and battered in the care of Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. And after seeing this report from the Auditor General, he says it doesn't seem like much has changed. I felt hurt that not much reform has happened in terms of supporting LGBT youth in care. The report reveals, quote, a lack of reliable and consistent information regarding LGBTQ youth in the care of the department and says various policies and procedures were skimped or scrapped altogether. In a statement Wednesday, DCFS said this report is based on old data, assuring Illinoisans they're expanding resources for LGBTQ youth, but McIntyre isn't convinced and a statement blaming these issues on the last three years is, is a slap in the face to every single LGBT foster child and every LGBT potential foster parent. Counselor Mary Beth Ray says this problem needs to be solved quickly, saying LGBTQ youth are already at risk. What makes a difference in that is feeling like they're supported so that they're as mentally healthy and emotionally okay as possible. LGBTQ youth are overrepresented in our foster system. Some estimates show they make up a fifth of all youth in care. And advocates say it's impossible to protect these youth because the department still can't exactly pinpoint who or where they are. More likely to report assault. More likely to change schools. More likely to face mental health issues. Those are the risks LGBTQ youth in state care face every day. But in a system that's meant to protect them, they aren't even being identified. What message does that send to you about inclusion and safety for youth? Well, in a way, I would love to say that that shouldn't even be a question that we're asking because why should it matter? Why should we have to have a special tracking system for LGBTQ youth because they're going to be targeted? 16-year-old Sophia grew up in foster care, saying she's witnessed poor treatment of LGBTQ youth. We blurred her face to protect her privacy. It's just another thing that is used to discriminate against them and makes them more vulnerable. The issue all too familiar for James McIntyre, a former foster youth now working as a foster advocate. He says he's not surprised the department still isn't asking the question. Gender identity and sexual orientation are seen as taboo topics within the caseworking community where you might have some that are really upfront and say, you know, you can come to me with anything and then you'll have others that don't even want to talk about it. A February audit revealing the Department of Children and Family Services had no plan to track and protect these youth. Danielle Fitzgerald, the head of the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion for the department says they think they've found a solution for tracking these children. Why did it take until 2021 to create a system that would do that? Yeah, um, so, you know, um, again, our, our LGBTQI uh, youth in care uh, and families are very important. What I can speak to you on is where we're at right now and, and where we're going. The answer? Unclear. Fitzgerald describing a set of questions about sexual orientation and gender identity as the potential game changer. However, there's still no timeline on when that idea will become reality. We are uh, fast tracking um, and want that to happen uh, as quickly as we can, but it has to be thoughtful, mindful. Sophia urging the department to work as quickly as possible. The safety of youth could depend on it. Being in care makes you vulnerable and then being a part of the LGBTQ community makes you vulnerable and then being in care and LGBTQ makes you all the more vulnerable. 
A scathing audit report revealing the Department of Children and Family Services isn't adequately protecting LGBTQ youth in their care. And that report was released back in February, but now all eyes are turning to lawmakers about how they plan on keeping these kids safe. News Channel 20's Jordan Elder spoke with department officials and foster youth about the reported failures this before the hearing. She has more. Foster youth past and present told me that when you're in the system, sometimes being yourself is a threat to your own safety. I spoke with a teenager currently in foster care about the treatment she's witnessed for LGBTQ youth. Her message is clear. These children need change now. 16-year-old Sophia has been in Illinois foster homes for most of her life. We've blurred her face to protect her privacy. Her experience is showing firsthand how the failures outlined in the audit are affecting youth. I have had friends that have come out or have been openly gay or bisexual and their foster family would kick them out or return them. You heard her correctly. Foster parents returning LGBTQ youth like they're an item at a store. It's hard because as a youth in care, you kind of already feel like you don't matter and like you're just kind of like a case number. Sophia's foster mother, Alicia Webby, says the risk of discrimination is high on both sides of the system for children and their potential parents. There's agencies that have come out and will not support foster parents who are gay, yet we're then saying we don't have enough homes for these kids to go to. For youth, the problem goes beyond just the home. A 2017 study showing LGBTQ youth in the Illinois foster system were more likely to report getting beat up, both at home and at school. Gerlandi Guidetti of the ACLU set out to fight those odds in 2017, saying the Department of Children and Family Services isn't following their own policy to find safe and affirming placements for youth. Our hope is that this auditor's report will force the department to finally take a serious look at these issues and make meaningful changes, not just you know, check off boxes. But is change really happening? To find out, I sat down with Danielle Fitzgerald, the leader of DCFS's Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. What's being done to make sure the department lives up to the policy that they will be a safe and affirming place for children when the audit found a couple shortfalls in that care? We have done a lot uh, since the beginning of the audit and we have improved um, and we will continue to improve. Fitzgerald describing department-wide meetings and conversations about how to implement those audit recommendations, stressing over and over. Our department is, um, is uh, very um, supportive and affirming uh, and inclusive. As a social worker, we always say love for all people, and, uh, and so that, that's important that we have that mindset. But Sophia says that's not the mindset she's seen in the depths of the system. It's really not love and it's really hateful to shut out people based on who they are. 